Yeah. Power Monday all up in your area. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? I'm ready. We ready. All right, let's go then. Yeah. And it's going down right now. Huh. What's up, y'all? What's happening? How's everybody feeling today? I hope you're feeling the way that I am. And I think that's a good way. Everything is going to be okay. It's Monday night. And you know how we go. It's time for the show. Oh, what's up, y'all? Cal Chamberlain, me favorita is all up in the house. My brother Ansel Jones. My brother Ansel Jones. T. Carrie Wright. Morning, noon, and night. Yes. Uh, a Stacey White. Uh, how y'all feeling, y'all? So, yo, so check it out. Tonight on the Daily Go Getimism show, we are talking about marking your territory. Uh, marking your territory. I think we all know a little something about that. Sometimes it's legitimate, sometimes it ain't. But we're going to take a look at it. We're going to take a strong because it's the daily, daily, the daily, the daily, the daily, the daily go get a mism show. You think it ain't when it is? Huh? You think it won't when it is? We are here and we are in motion. We do this thing. Taking all fast lane, no coasting. And everything is going to be all right. We do this thing on a power Monday night, all right? So, yeah, marking your territory. It's actually a common practice that surprisingly we start at a very very young age almost at the time of birth and we're gonna get into all of that so if we've been if we've been marking our territory since the time when we popped out of our mama's stomachs what would make us think that as we grew into adulthood that we would stop this practice see marking your territory is an okay thing to do the problem comes is when you start market territory that doesn't belong to you and that's what you do sometimes it's false most times it's true and uh when you come through somebody might get mad because you marked some territory that you didn't have so we're gonna get into all of that man we're gonna talk about different ways that people mark territory is it right is it wrong do we have to always do this to get along do i have to put my trust issues on you do you have to do the things that you do i think that me and you you and i think we have to do these kind of things to get by i can fly y'all all right let's get it popping urban therapy with sun sun seven five two with this your daily daily the daily the daily the daily the daily the daily the Daily Go Get Emism Show. We do this every single day, every single day, every day. Every day it rains, every day it rains. And the DG will do the same. We break it down, baby. Every day it rains. And the DG will do the same. Every day it rains. And the DG will do the same. Every day it rains. And the DG will do the same. Every day it rains and the DG will do the same. I'm your host, Sun752, a.k.a. Omar with the... And if you can't say Omar with the... Well, then you just say Omar with the R. This is the Daily Go Show all up in your area. I'm feeling like a real man should. And I hope y'all feeling like real men and women should also. The Daily Go Get Him Show. So we're talking about marking your territory. Uh Uh-oh. Talking about marking your territory. This is the kind of topic that makes people be like, oh, man. It all, I think all of us have a memory with somebody Ill, illicitly, unwarrantedly. I'm not sure if that's a word. Unwarranted mark their territory. And it was actually your territory. Those were your belongings. Those were your possessions. And somebody put their name on it, their stamp on it. They made sure that they left a symbolization that they were here. You know, like the old graffiti. Somebody would either write on a wall or carve in a tree. Such and such was here. Well, like I was telling y'all in the preamble, we have been marking our territory or have having ourselves marked as territory since the time we were born. When you really think about it, when you are born, one of the first things that happens with you is that you are given a name, a first name, a middle name for most of us, and a last name. And that last name, guess what? 
that last name symbolizes exactly who you belong to. So all of the babies that are there, all of the other babies that are there in that nursery that were born on or around the day of your birth, they all have a name. And this is how we know which child to give to who. This is how we know whose territory or whose belongings or whose possessions each child is. So we want to make sure there's no mix up and you wind up taking home a child that does not look like you, never acted like you and doesn't seem to fit in with your family. So from the beginning, the beginning of our lives, we have had our territory marked. Our parents have shown that they are marking their territory and it has the approval of the hospital, the administration, the state, and the federal government. From the time that we we're born, we mark our, our territory is marked. My last name is McIntyre. Your last name is Chamberlain. Your last name is Jones. Your last name is Wright. Your last name is White. Even when you get married, a woman takes on the last name of a husband. You think you think that ain't a marking of a territory? I think it is. That's why many of us who are old schoolers, we look at people who do a hyphen like. What's this about? What's, your, what's the hyphen about? And there are legitimate reasons for the hyphen. But nonetheless, you know, if you're a purist, if you're a purist, you're like, no, I ain't no hyphen. The woman gets the man's last name. That's it. If you want to keep your old last name, you don't need to get married. You're not identifiable. And your territory isn't marked. Your husband's territory isn't marked. He with that? Oh, okay. Hmm. So he marked you as his territory and allowed you to and allowed your family to keep you as, um, as their territory too? Well, regardless of how you feel about that, it's just an example. Our last name is symbolic of where we come from or who we belong to, or it's an it's an identifiable legal, it's a legal identifying mark that is respected around the world. Internationally, everywhere you go, yeah, your last name is my last name. This is our tribe. This is our village. This is our way. This is our state, city, country, town, whatever, whatever the case may be. So, yeah, our, our territory gets marked in, in a lot of legitimate ways, in a lot of innocent ways. With, with, where the problem comes is when people start to mark territory that does not necessarily belong to them. We start marking theoretical or hypothetical or even um, metaphorical territory like... Yeah, you my girl. She well, says who? Says this passion mark on your neck. Oh, okay. Yep. See, the passion mark didn't say exactly who you belong to. It just lets you know that another man was there. Of course, it could have been a woman sucking on her neck, but let's 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 keep it let's keep it one hundred percent straight. Let's do this the right way. Yeah. Plenty when we were when we were teenagers or whatever or some of y'all little nasty ass fast ass kids sucking on each other neck sucking on each other cheeks how did you explain that how do you explain that to your parents you coming home you know what i mean you've been you supposed to be outside playing here you are 12 13 years old you come home with a passion mark on your neck or on your face why do people used to do that why would you put a passion mark on somebody's face you just want them to get an ass whooping when they get home huh you want them to be on punishment. You want them to have to answer questions, huh? You just want to not be able to come over the crib, huh? But it starts way before then. When we were younger, when we were younger, when we first started going to school, our parents may have put our names on our pens, pencils, 
notebooks, book bags, sweaters, jackets, because we knew that everybody who went to the school didn't have the, the, the economic or, well, the socioeconomic background that our parents may have had. Some children didn't have parents that could provide for them the type of possessions that our parents could provide for us. So what did you do to make sure that your, that your sons and daughters came home with the right amount of pencils, papers, books, um, crayons, you know, whatever? You put their name on it, marking their territory, identifying their belongings, their possessions. I know my, my mom made sure everything that she sent me to school with had my name on it. I didn't understand, like, the jacket? Who going to take somebody's jacket? People, jackets have been stolen. You know they have. Oh, shit. We found we sure found that out the hard way when we were teenagers with those those starter jackets. Oh shoot, I'm getting that Lakers jacket. And you know, some people didn't care it had, if it had your name in it. Your, your name was clearly marked in that satin lining. T. Carry right. And so you was too young. Uh Stacy White. Had a Pistons jacket, Stacy White, right there, and in, in, uh, um, written in, inside the lining. Somebody might have still took that shit. shit. Stacy White, Stacy Schmite. I'm getting this Pistons jacket. Uh, Detroit Bad Boys. Uh, Detroit Bad Boys. Uh. <laughs> hey, hey. Just because you mark your territory doesn't necessarily mean that somebody's going to be discouraged from taking your stuff or in. Or, or impeding or or trans trespassing on your territory, taking your possessions, grand larceny, petty larceny. You know, grand larceny is anything over a thousand dollars. Petty larceny. So, like I said, this whole marking of the territory starts when we're very young, but for some reason. After we start getting into relationships, we start taking a harder look at the marking of the territory and start being a little resentful of how it's done. I understand. I get it. I do. But we got to take a deeper look look at, at certain things besides just the surface look. But we're going to get into the surface. We're going to get into the regular stuff. We all know the stories of chicks leaving panties, bras, deodorant, feminine wash, perfume, earrings, hair clips, combs, brushes, hair, 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 hair. You know what I mean? I got a piece of a red wig in my bed. I got a piece of a green wig in my bed. I got some weave oh, in my bed. It's black. It's blue. It's red. It's green. It's purple. It's pink. It's all kinds of things. It's all burn, all burn, weave in my bed. It's all burn, all burn, weave in my bed. Shoot. Now we here talking about it. I wouldn't be surprised if that's one of the one of the chief reasons why some of these chicks ins insist on I'm wearing a weave. They know they can leave. They can they can leave that territorial mark easily. But you know, it ain't always just it ain't always just women who who mark who mark their territory or what they consider to be their territory. Because a lot of times it's not their territory. It's not their territory. They don't live in that man's house. They don't pay any bills there. They don't. Their name isn't on in, in any paperwork. They just visiting. So you marking territory because a man, you know, because he dug you out for a couple of minutes. Because it ain't always, you know, it ain't always a few hours. It ain't always a spend the night situation. 
you can best believe if you make it go, if you make a woman go home that night, she's gonna leave, she's gonna drop something there, and she can always say, Oh, yeah, I just forgot it because you know, I was in a rush to get out of there. I, I, I was in a rush to get out of there, I, 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 but you notice <laughs> if you think it's, 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 it's innocently unintentional. If you notice, when y'all go to a hotel, everybody go- collects all of their stuff. They don't leave nothing at the telly. Nothing. <laughs> but that same courtesy doesn't go into the, into the uh, into they uh, to a man's house that they they may have um, spent some time at. Men do the same thing, you know. Besides the passion marks, of course, w- women leave passion marks too. Some people, some some areas call them hickeys. We call them passion marks. I personally, I call him an O mark. Ow, 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 ow. I mean, it's round. It's round. Well, not every, it's not always round when other people do it, but it is when I do it. Anyway, so, but men do it too. Men definitely do it. We all know about, you know, the dude that ride that rode in the in the passenger seat of a woman's car. And he put the seat all the way back and didn't return the seat to the to to uh, um, the regular position when he got out of the car. Put the seat all the way back. You know, women don't ride like that. Even women who sleep in the car don't 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 put their seat all the way back like a man does. You know, so he'll do stuff like that, and he'll always say, "Oh, I just I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that. I I I didn't even realize I did that." You know, I'm tall. I'm tall, so I just put the seat back. I didn't mean not to return the seat to his normal position. It's hard to say that that he's lying because you ever let somebody um drive your car? They drive your car and and they move the seat to a different position that you normally set your seat at. And um and they don't return it to wherever it was supposed to be when they finished driving it so you know it can be innocent but a lot of times it's not because we know what it is the only thing is a man is not a man doesn't carry as many accessories that a woman does so he's not likely to leave certain things at a woman's house unless he just outright is letting you know yeah i'm gonna leave these boots here these sneakers here and all that. You know, still, the problem comes when people start marking territory that doesn't necessarily belong to them. That's when we run into problems. Territory that doesn't necessarily belong to them. I guess we have to get into whether if you're dealing with somebody and on whatever level. Does that give you the right to mark your territory of, of as being theirs? I mean, mark your territory of theirs. We know that men and women have sex sometimes. That doesn't mean that they go together. Doesn't mean that. Sometimes men and women have sex with each other and they both are married or one of them is married. You know, all, all kinds of stuff. So it's not always a situation where you have the the um undisputed right to 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 lay claim to something. But there are people who who can't help it or don't want to help it. By the way, y'all make sure that y'all hit that like button. Let me make sure I get these likes up. Make sure that y'all hit the like button. Make sure that y'all share the show. Make sure that y'all subscribe to the channel. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, I appreciate it. It is the Daily go get Mism show. And let's see what y'all talk about. What's going on, my man, Cal Doon? Cal Doon all up in the house. You know what I mean? South Shaolin Fist. Cal Doon, what's going on, my dude? What's going on, my dude? Let me see. And so Jones says, wrong or right is mine, hammer time. Watch your toes, okay? All right. All right. We miss you too, Cal. Stacy White says, I got a ring at a young age, but it didn't mean nothing. Okay. Oh, you know what? Yeah, the ring. I ain't even get into that. Okay, yeah. The wedding ring. Or sometimes the friendship ring. 
you got a ring and it's on your left hand we talking about something something we talking about little 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 and so Jim says, nicknames are making territory. I mean, I'm sorry. Nicknames are marking territory. It's only a few people that calls me Ansel. Ah. Oh, so you saying that we don't even really know you like that. I can dig it. I can dig it. Carol Chamber says, I have never felt the need to leave anything behind at a man's house. Because you was probably already secure in the fact that you not me. But marking your territory can be a, a form of insecurity. You want everybody else to know that you have been there because you think that somebody else might be there to be to, to bear witness to the fact that you have some stuff over there. You know, so yeah, I can dig it. And so says. This group of people and a couple of family members and military family. Those are the only people who call you Ansel. Okay. Caldoon says, enjoying the show, brother. Keep bringing that fire content. Appreciate me some. You for saying that and also for coming on through. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. My G. But yeah. Let's go back to what Stacy was talking about. Yeah, putting a ring on the finger. Friendship ring, engagement ring, wedding ring. Legitimate forms of ownership. You know, a lot of people are offended by the word ownership and possession. They you know, like, I don't belong to you, but I belong to you, but and it's a double-edged sword because you know, on one end. Some people might say, like, if you ain't put no ring on their finger, then you can't lay, lay, you can't really lay claim to nothing. But at the same time, if you cheat on the person that you didn't put a ring, a ring on their finger, ain't nobody gonna be like, well, you know, what I mean, we ain't really cheating if you ain't if you ain't married or engaged. Like, yeah, all right, because feelings don't give a shit about whether you're married or not. All I know is that I know you when you know me. I said, I know you when you know me. I said, I know you and you know me. I said, I know you and you know me. And I, I belong to you and you belong to me. I said, I belong to you and you belong to me. Uh, we agree that this is the way it's going to be. We've been seeing each other for a year times three. And I know that we going to be together. That's T-O-U-G. No, I'm saying it's T-O-G-E-T-A. Y'all know what I'm talking about. T-O-G-E-T-H-E-R. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Listen, you my girl, you my joint. I better not see no niggas, you know what I'm saying? You know, come around all up in your face. You know what I'm saying? I better not see you giving. Look, man. Listen, at a very young age, you know, I had to I I, I learned the hard way that jealousy wasn't gonna get me nowhere. I tried it. I did. I tried it. I never was really comfortable with the whole jealousy thing. I was like, I'm going to have to find a way for these chicks to want me so bad that they just act right. Because all the, cause the other way, eh? Woo! Picture, 1994. Here I am at my apartment. 5 West Topahawken Street. That's right on the corner of Germantown and Topahawken on top of Rulaz Pizza. If you know the area, you know what I'm talking about. Third floor. I see my girl. My girl's coming from, from Jersey. Hold up. Was it my girl? I'm not really sure. Was was we just seeing each other? Whatever. All I know is that she was coming from Lawnside, New Jersey over to my crib and she had a car. I had a car. So she was coming through and um, we had agreed on that. Everything was cool. I see her pull up to the crib. She get out of her car. Another dude got out of her car when she pulled up to my crib. I'm looking down at her because I'm getting ready to buzz her in to the crib. But I'm looking. I see her down there talking to the bull. Then, 
Yo, you can you 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 can tell he kicking it to her. Like he kicking it to her, like, yeah, you know, blah blah. And you can tell he ain't know her. He just met, I don't know what he maybe he's maybe she stopped somewhere to get I don't know. You know what I'm saying? But he evidently followed her to my crib. And I'm watching. I'm looking down there, like I said, third floor. I'm looking at her. She all in the bull face, you know. She wasn't, she sure wasn't dismissive, like, well, nah, you know, like, you know, I ain't see a point up to the crib, like, no, nah, I'm about to go see my dude. <laughs> you know, she I don't know what the conversation was, but by the looks of things, she was she was with whatever with, with he, you know, whatever he was selling, she was buying. She turns, she gives him her number, writes the number on his back. You remember that old shit. Hey, you know, get the pen and the paper. You know, here, right on here, write it on my back. You know what I'm saying? There's a way to touch a motherfucker that you don't even know yet. Like that kind. Of, I'm looking at this shit like, hey, now I'm burning the I you want to yo. If I was an eagle, I would have I would have swooped down on, on, on both of them. But I had to play it off. I had to play it off because I was like, like I said. The whole jealousy thing ain't, I ain't like the way it made me feel because jealousy will make you do some things. And I ain't like what it was making me feel like doing. So I had to fight with myself like, yo, do I even let this 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 chick up in my crib? I shouldn't buzz a bum ass in. She wasn't no bum though. She flying them all. <laughs> she was bad as shit. Oh my God, my God. Oh. And we was going out. So I'm flipping through my mind all this, all this, you know, real quick, like part of me didn't want to say nothing. You know how you go through that. Like, I ain't even gonna say nothing. I'm just you know, let this play out, blah, blah, blah. That wasn't gonna work. I ain't had that much self-control without when I was 24 years old. So when she got up, 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 upstairs, I was like, yo, so um. That boy you was talking to down downstairs, you like you know him. She had that look on her face, like, Dad! like court. She made up some bullshit, like, oh, um, he um can't remember exactly what she said, but it was some lie, and it was obviously a lie. Cause it ain't come fast, like, oh no, 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 no. That's that's the boy, you know, blah blah blah. I just know him from such and such, such, such. You know, he sell handbags. No, it wasn't nothing like that. It was like, oh no, um, she ain't know how much I saw, but I saw the shit from Alpha to Omega. I saw her pull up. I saw him pull up behind her. Her get out the car. Him get out the car. I saw the whole transaction. I wish I didn't see it, but I saw it. Anyway, um. I'm saying, I'm, I'm telling y'all this story because I had to ask myself, as pissed off as I was, you know, and as much as I knew that she was lying, you know, you know, she was a wild chick. You know what I'm saying? She, but she let me know that if I was thinking about marking that territory, I better forget about it. That wasn't my that wasn't my territory to mark. The next man wouldn't have looked at it that way. Like the next man would have might might have looked at it like, well, regardless of whatever happened before me, now I'm here and I'm taking this. This is my territory now. Mm -mm. I don't have it in me to think that way. So I had to I had to think about it logically like What do they say nowadays? She for the streets. She was absolutely for the streets. But she was going to be in my bed that night. So, I, you know, I had to kind of. But that wasn't my girl. And I knew it. So no matter whatever happened, I knew that I could never lay claim to her. No matter what she said, no matter what she did. And trust and believe, she said and did things to make me believe. And I was like, nah, nah. 
love and possession don't make me want to go upside your head because you because i caught you with this this dude and that wasn't the first that was that was the first time but it was it wouldn't be the last it happens now suppose i tried to mark that territory it wouldn't have mattered whether i put a passion mark on her it wouldn't have mattered whether i gave her a baby in her stomach it, none of that would have mattered she wasn't ready to be she wasn't ready to have her territory marked it wasn't like that it wasn't like that funny thing about it was when i saw her and him together it reminded me of when i met her i met her at the black expo down the civic center and it was that same kind of jovial like oh yeah oh yeah all right so we going you know blah 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 uh, yeah yeah so that was a mo so I had to, you know, unfortunately look at myself in the mirror. I ain't like the way it looked. That's on me, though. You know what I mean? It wasn't my rules. It wasn't my rules. The biggest decision that I had to make that, that day was whether, whether I felt like going out, whether I felt like kicking with her. And I'm, I guess I was thinking, like, well, I might as well cut. I might as well. I might as well see it through. Cause what I'm going to do? Just stay in the crib and be mad. Send her ass back to um, um, Jersey on some old. Stuff. I mean, I got we we ain't go together yet. It wasn't like that. The thing is, I knew that now we can't go together. Cause I'm not going unforget. I, I can't forget nothing like that. I can't unsee what I saw and act like it's sweet like that. You know, what I mean, that was some disrespectful shit. You should at least did it out of my eyesight. So okay, all right. So 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 so. Carol said, "I guess she really wasn't your girl. Yo, know, she was not my girl. Let her tell it though. I am. I am. I'm like you're not. You're not. Wild ass Camden John. If any of y'all know about them Camden, New Jersey chicks, you go, you keep thinking that a Camden chick is all yours and you from Philly. Because if she from Camden and you from Philly, she come to she come to Philly to see way more Philly dudes than you. And that's just the way it was. You ain't going to like it. But that's how it was, especially at that age. 22 23 24 and all of that we was all wild we was all exploring so yeah camden she was a camden chick <laughs> i was like these jersey chicks these jersey chicks is off the chain you know what i mean talk about having to take the good with the bad there was a lot of good but that bad to have you like one thing i learned about camden chicks though don't be thinking that you the only Philly dude or just because you from Philly, you you going to be a superstar. You want to be a superstar and you from Philly? Delaware. Delaware chicks will be like, cuff me. Cuff me. I'm I'm ready. Them Camden chicks, they be like, hold on now, hold on. I go get me a Trenton nigga or go up... Uh, um, um, oh, go up north and get me a Newark. I might cross the bridge and, and get me a New York. I ain't got to go to Philly. I know it's closer. But, you know what I mean? They be like, I'm from Camden. We as hood as y'all. We even hooder. We hooder than y'all. <laughs> but, yeah. And so, Joe says, she said he just afraid. She couldn't even get it out right. She was busted. She was busted. <laughs> she was. Because she ain't expect me. To, I, and I, I know the way I am because I was angry. So I know. I, so I, when I get angry, I had this. I've been told that I have. I get this look in my eye. It's a very dangerous look. And it's just me and her in my apartment. So I know she was feeling like. Well, this ain't a good look. But you know, I ain't I ain't into no woman beating and none of that shit. So it was that wasn't an issue. But it was like, but I was mad at me some her. But it wasn't my territory. 
It wasn't my territory to mark. And even had I marked it, it wasn't going to be respected by the, by anybody who saw the mark. They was just going to be like, whatever. I get it. Omar was here. But guess what? I'm here now. So you can go back to oh when you did when you did when you done with Dave or when Dave done with you. No. Um Emily says it was probably good that you that you saw it though. Yeah, M. You know, one of those things. Where you know the universe, God, he will he will put you right in front of what you need to see, and you be like, "Nah, I ain't trying none." You trying not to see? You trying not to look? You are like, but I, I put my name on it. How you gonna disrespect my name? I don't care whether the name is a tattoo. I don't care if you had it engraved in it. I don't care if you branded her like like a like a black Greek fraternity. Everybody, not everybody is going to respect your territory. So you can mark it all you want. But like I said, we start marking our territory at a, or having our territory marked for us at a very young age. So what makes us think that as we grow into adulthood, that that the, the marking of the territory is going to stop? So yeah, we can resent it all we want, but when it doesn't get marked the way that we think, or when it gets marked um for 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 possessions that we have not given to somebody but it's a lesson and yeah i need you right emily i had to see that shit i was just mad i had to see it i was like man was, hey, well, friend, like, I, but i like this joint you just fly the motherfucker. you know it's 24. she was a jersey john with a car you can't stop that. You can't stop that, son. Well, she was on the road. <laughs> you know I mean? She was on the road. It was crazy. Um, and so says, guys that say she for the streets, how long she been getting, <laughs> she been getting mail at your house. <laughs> oh, wow. Carol says, even friendships, friendships aren't always what they seem. True. She said uh, she didn't expect you to see it. I didn't expect me to see it. Carol, I ain't going to lie. At that time, I felt like, yo, I wish I would. I wish I would have just been chilling on my couch instead of looking out the window. I wasn't even looking for her. I had, okay, I had a corner apartment. So I had, I had uh, um, windows on this side and a bay window here. So I had three windows uh, for the bay here. And two windows over, so I had a lot of light. I could see all the way down top of Hawkins Street. I could see all the way down Germantown Avenue, and I used to love to look all the way down German Ave- Germantown Avenue. You would see so much stuff. It used to relax me. It was it was a good look. So I'm just happy to be looking down the street, probably coming from the bathroom or whatever. And and, and I saw a car. I was like, oh okay, I see a car. She coming up Germantown Avenue, turns on top of Hawkins, parks. And that's when the whole thing went down. I wasn't the type of dude that was going to hunt. Because, like, for what? The whole marking your territory thing. Here's the thing. If you're not going to do nothing about what you saw, then you don't even need to look no more. So all of that going through people's phones, you know, um, going through their drawers, you know, seeking, looking, you know, calling numbers, all of those crazy stuff. If you're not going to do, if you know damn well that that's not going to be the end, but you just want to scare somebody or or let them know that you know what they're doing and you think that's going to change anything, then you're fooling yourself. So this, this whole marking your territory stuff is 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 is, is really a futile thing. You you make a better mouse trap. What do you get? A smarter mouse. That's all. They might be sloppy as hell, but they won't be sloppy as much as they were that first time. They'll be sloppy another time. And your your ass here you are, you know, with your magnifying glass and your Sherlock Holmes hat and your and your and your trench coat and all of that kind of shit, doing all this detective work, and you ain't indicting nobody. You ain't booking nobody. 
You ain't locking up nobody. You ain't going to court. You ain't got no convictions. You are a worthless detective. But I know you don't want to look, you don't want, you know what I mean? But you still marking that territory, setting traps and all that shit. Setting the trap and all that. Carol says the signs are always there. We tend to ignore them. Carol says, what's that song? Anticipation. Anticipation. Anticipation is making me wait. Yeah. But you so you know, like I said, we start marking our territory or having our territory marked at a young age from the time that we are babies up until the time we start going to from the time of the cubby hole. Y'all know about the cubby hole. The cubby hole is where you put your coat. The cubby hole is where you put your book bag. The cubby hole is where you put your, your galoshes, your coveralls, your whatever. And sometimes you would go to your cubby hole and things would be missing from your cubby hole, even though everything in your cubby hole was marked. You ever go to your cubby hole and you 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 see that something is missing from your cubby hole and you see it in somebody else's cubby hole? This is in your cubby hole. You you go four cubby holes down. You see your stuff in somebody else's cubby hole with your name on it. How your name? Now you go to them like, yo, you got my my stuff in your cubby hole. No, I don't. Yes, you do. No, I don't. Yes, you do. Yeah, 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 yeah yes, you do. I know I don't. Stop lying to me. I said, uh, yeah, yeah. So you show them like, listen, look, your stuff. Look, that's my stuff. In your cubby hole. Now, what you should have actually done was take the stuff out of your cubby hole okay. and put it put, put it back in your cubby hole. But you know that if you would have done that, then they wouldn't there would have been no proof that it was in their cubby hole in the first place. So you left it in their cubby hole, took them to their cubby hole to show them that your stuff was in their cubby hole. And what did they say? I don't know how it got there. I ain't put it there. I don't know how it got there. I ain't put it there. I don't know how it got there. I ain't put it there. I'm just saying that marking your territory isn't always the the most effective way to keep your possessions being unviolated. People will violate your territory whether you mark it or not. Whether you mark it or not. Whether that ring is on their finger or not. They don't care. A disrespectful person don't care what you mark. A thief... A th- Listen, my old heads told me a long time ago, locks and alarms are for honest people. An honest person will respect the fact that you have a lock on something. So they're not going to take that opportunity to just lift it. And a lot of times people steal things just because there's an opportunity. Ain't nobody going to know about it. It's right here. It's It's unsecured. It's unlocked. I can just take it. It ain't going to be no big deal. Other people, thieves, they don't care whether you have a lock. They don't care whether you have a combination lock or or, or a key lock. They don't care whether you have an alarm system. They don't care whether you have security at the gate. They don't care whether you have Fort Knox guards. They're going to steal your stuff because that's what they do. What you think this is? Locks and alarms are for honest people. They are to keep honest people in line. Thieves don't give a shit about none of that. None of your security matters to a thief. None of your security measures matter to a thief. Do you understand what I'm saying? Actual fact, baby. Actual fact. All right. Okay. Emily says, off topic, but 17 more subscribers, and he will be at a... Th- Yo, you ain't never gonna lie. I, I took a look at that. I was like, damn, you... Cal talking about anticipation. I'm like, this is a slow joint. 
I'm never gonna be YouTube rich. <laughs> I'm never gonna be YouTube rich. <laughs> this is the slowest climb to a thousand. It's like But it's all right. <laughs> karma says, "Karma." I mean, Stacy says, "Karma is so real." It is all right. Y'all, let's do these birthday shout outs. We have some birthday shout outs to do. Some people were born on this glorious, glorious, glorious June thirteenth, and they deserve to be acknowledged. So let's go about our business of acknowledging them, <laughs> acknowledging them. <laughs> Acknowledging them and making them feel special because they are special because they are special because they are S P E C I A L. They get the R E S P E C T. They are S P E C I A L. They get the R E S P E C T. They are S P E C I A L. They get the R E S P E C T. They get number one out the box. Deneen Williams, happy birthday to you, Deneen, and also Jamil Jamila Casey. Turning 51 years old today, and also Shirley Tigo uh, Talago turning 42 years old today, and Shari Jones, happy birthday to you. And also, also wait a minute, is this is this today or is this that's not today? That's yesterday. Nah, son, nah. We gotta fix that. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, refresh. All right, and Zinga Abebe, happy birthday to you, turning 51 years old today. And Courtney Shaw, happy birthday to you. And Kimya Parker, happy birthday to you. And wait a minute, she's a go-getter. Titina Yitna, turning 30 years old today. And Manus Lamb, happy birthday to you. And Jardina LaRue, turning 27 years old today. And Antonia Gonzalez, happy birthday to you. And Darcel Wynn Leonard. And also Cheryl Sharp, turning 39 years old today. And Shakina Thomas, turning 41 years old today. And Crystal Brignac, turning 45 years old today. And my girl, Michelle Daniels, happy birthday to you. And last but not least, my girl, Rashina Long. I want to say happy birthday to all of y'all and anyone else out there who shares this birthday on this glorious, glorious, glorious June 13th, anywhere out there in the world, worldwide, internationally, and universally. All of y'all go ahead and turn up, turn up, but don't turn up too loud. Just turn up loud enough so everybody can hear you. A rock out, rock on it, do the damn, the damn, the rock out, rock on it, do the, 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 the damn, rock out, rock on it, do the damn thing. You do your thing, y'all. Represent the queens and kings. You do your thing, y'all. Represent the queens and kings. Good things happen to those who wait. Great things happen to those who grind. And any, any, the any, the anything can happen to those who go for theirs. So go hard, go for yours. And remember, man, listen, marking your territory. Like I said, we learn how to do it at a very young age. From the time that we, we receive our first, middle, and last names, we are marked as someone's territory. And from then on, we learn to mark other territory as we go on in our lives, as we learn, we love, and we 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 meet people and get to understand what this world is all about. There are going to be times when you feel like something belongs to you that really doesn't. And even when it doesn't, you may have it on layaway. Now, you know, when you have something on layaway, it belongs to you, but you're still making payments and you still haven't been able to take it home. And I think that sometimes we make that type of, we carry that type of mentality onto to things, people, places, and other things that we consider to be possessions and territory that may not really apply to the situations that we are in. One of the biggest mistakes that you can make and one of the most hurting things that can happen to you is somebody is for somebody to identify a territory that you had believed or taken as possession for yourself. And they tell you, no, that ain't yours. Many brothers out there have asked the female, yo, yo, whose pussy is this? And that answer, this, women don't always answer yes or yours in the heat of the moment. Some be like, 
I ain't saying nothing. We can talk about this at another time. Just keep on grooving, baby. Just keep on grooving. Your job is to keep on pumping, and I'm going to pump it back. <laughs> pump it back. It is what it is. Love is love, baby. Peace to all my day ones, my every days, and my brand news. I love y'all to death, resuscitate y'all. I love y'all right back to life. I hope that y'all enjoyed listening to the show as much as I enjoy broadcasting it. And um, and um, and um, make sure that y'all hit the like button. Make sure that y'all share the show, and make sure that y'all subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet. Like, yes, like Emily said, we are only 17, 17 removed from the one thousand. And then when we get to one thousand, we gotta make sure that we stay above. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Actual facts, man, but I appreciate y'all. So, blog talk, we're going to get you out of here. You know how it goes. My power Monday, dear. All right. So, blog talk, we're getting out of here. Uh, I said blog talk, we get getting out of here. And, 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 and for my YouTubers, you know just how we do, but thanks for coming on through. See you on the other side, my boobers. Peace, y'all. Power Monday. Holla back at y'all tomorrow at seven. Peace.